My name is Allie Tepper. I'm the Mellon Interdisciplinary Fellow here at the Walker Art Center. And I'm here with Mazen Kerbaj, Lena Magdalene, and Rabia Mrue, who just premiered Borborygmus, a new theater piece uh, co-commissioned by the Walker. Uh, and I'm excited to talk with them. I thought we could talk a little bit about the origins of the piece itself and of your collaboration. And uh, Lena and Rabia, you two have a long history of working together, your partners actually. Um, so I imagine your collaboration is quite fluid in the way you speak to each other. But Mazen, you're kind of new to working with these two. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering at what point the collaboration began and kind of where the idea of Borbrigmas started. Well, it started like we know each other from Beirut, but right. not very well. We knew each other, we have friends in common. And um, Rabia and Lina moved to Berlin maybe a year before me, maybe four years ago you moved. Five years ago, and then three years ago, I moved to Berlin. Uh, all of us, by by decision, to move uh, out of Beirut, and Berlin seemed a nice city. Uh, and there we became closer, so uh, as friends. And then um, many times we would be having dinner or having a drink or something. Hey, we should. It, it was more as a joke, like let's do something together. And then. We started a little bit, Rabia and me, to meet sometimes in the afternoon to try to work together, but without knowing on what. So uh, me, I do not come at all from theater. It's my first ever experience. So it was mostly we would sit and say, let's do something, maybe a scenario for comics because I draw comics or something musical because we both play music. And we would just sit and try to work, but in, in a really uh, uh, abstract way, like not knowing what we are doing. Mm. And this lasted for a while, like every month we would meet uh, casually and discuss. And then Rabia came uh, maybe seven months ago and says, uh, we can continue like this, or I have a commission and uh, if you want, we can, we can say, let's do it. Mm. In January, I said, uh, do we have time? He said, I don't know. I said, all right, <laughs> let's do it. And then, of course, naturally, we invited uh, Lina to be with us. And then we didn't even know back then if we would be, if I would be acting or uh, or uh, just writing with Rabia and Lina directing or Lina and right. Rabia writing, right. like it was really yeah, yeah. Uh, very, very blurry. Right. And little by little, uh, it ended up the three of us writing and then we will see who directs, then we were directing, then, then uh, performing it. So it's really mm. once we decided and we said, OK, we're doing it and I remember Rabia in a second meeting said, I'm sending our three names to the Walker Art Center. Are you sure? I said, yeah, yeah, let, let's just do it and see. Yeah. <laughs> but from there, it really developed very uh, organically and very naturally. And none of us had a concept in mind or an idea. We at all, we didn't know what we were going to talk about. And it really, we just met for a month in Beirut every day and said, OK, let's, let's write something. But we didn't know what we were writing. And mm -hmm. the things really uh, became evident by themselves, like little by little, text after text, idea after idea. Mm -hmm. Things uh, unfolded naturally somehow or organically. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I say it. Uh... Really good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So were there, did you ever create a prompt for each other? Like today, we're going to talk about our fears or today we're going to kind of get into a certain subject or or how does like how does the process of writing start exactly i don't remember so much no i it's think really, i think it was i think we, we had a lot of ideas yeah and then uh, at some point uh, we had this uh, artwork from our friend samir khaddash uh, then thumma and we we thought that maybe we can uh, we can like adapt this artwork and, and try to do something out of it. And then we had like one scene, which we call it Thumma, then. Uh, and, uh, and the other ideas, the old ideas started actually to, to go around this, uh, mm. this scene. And this is how like it started like to, to go on and, uh, and. Yeah, many ideas were really like, had nothing to do together, but then. Mm -hmm. Like really, we would say, okay, this is not working. Then 10 days later, somebody would say, but this text from 10 days, if we put it here, it would work. And then yeah. it's really, and for me, it was really very new because I work, uh, I collaborate a lot in music, but in music, it's improvised, we're on stage. Mm -hmm. But writing, I do it for comics and I do it really alone. And I know that they work a lot together and then they collaborate a lot with other people. But then I discovered that Lina also, it's beside working with Rabia, mm -hmm. 
correct me if I'm wrong, she never collaborated on writing something. Rabia collaborated with many other writers for some uh, some projects. Mm -hmm. So Lina and me were were newcomers to this, right. and and uh, I mean from my end at least was really very enriching and very. Uh, I was very afraid of how to work with other people and like you know uh, ownership on ideas and egos and stuff and it went so smoothly uh, mm. i think they are fantastic professionals <laughs> i was i was afraid and then spectacular spectacular <laughs> professionals it really went very smoothly and then yeah. there is a kind of respect of each one for the other's idea but also not a kind of dumb respect where like oh you no, like you would say no this idea doesn't work and mm. you would do it with arguments and there is no uh, at some point there was a kind of confidence mm -hmm. so if uh, Rabia tells me or tells Lina or I tell Lina or like this doesn't work mm -hmm. unless she is really sure that it works and she has arguments she would really let go the idea or he will really let we don't like get hold of like this is my idea or yeah and because I worked in advertising before a long time ago and there it's really another story like when you have an idea and somebody's like you really fight for it right, and it's right. so here it was really no ownership whatsoever and the whole thing is really very open and uh, on the contrary if somebody has a strong thing against it you don't even ask him why like you have confidence that mm -hmm. if it is so strong if sometimes somebody would say mm, maybe it doesn't work but sometimes like Rabia I remember once telling us this is shit and then they said okay like, like we just we just don't argue mm. because because like the confidence after a couple of days of writing the confidence was really total and you have a kind of blind confidence in mm. in, in the reception of the mm. ideas and uh, i love um the beginning of the piece which is you know you two you three sitting at a table and then you have these metronomes that you each um play to their own right. tempo and at their own speed. And I feel like it's a kind of, I don't know, it kind of speaks to this whole practice of collaborating and of your you all as individual actors, but also um, sometimes discordantly um, together and not, mm. and sometimes harmoniously. And I was curious about that scene, how that came together. And also in the scene, you end up taking the metronomes and you place them on these two cans and it seems to kind of change the sound of the whole um, mm -hmm. music of it. And I was just curious about this and how this came about. One of the ideas in the beginning was to, uh, this performance also we, we pre uh, often presented, presenting it as a requiem for the living. Right. And so the, one of the first ideas was to do like a kind of, uh, of concert without singing and without really playing uh, music, uh, but to use the setup of a concert and to use uh, different elements of a concert, uh, different uh, mu music instruments, but also metronome and, and, and whatever. And from here we start thinking what we can do with the different uh, elements. Finally, we didn't do the concert uh, thing, but uh, a lot of element uh, remained in, in, in the performance. Um, uh, one of them are, are the metronome. Mm. Um, about tempo, about uh, time, lifetime, about death time, about uh, earth time. Yeah. Um, I don't know, and uh, so yes, so I, uh, we wanted to work on the uh, on the material, but in a raw way, mm -hmm. and not to make a melody or to make or, or whatever. But uh, the, what is uh, the uh, essential element of a metronome? Of course, a metronome is a metronome, but for a guitar or an accordion or whatever. And also, you, when we were working, there, uh, it was so playful at the same time. How to play with this, uh, with these different elements or instruments or or whatever? Like kids, when they have an object and they don't use it as it is used usually, uh, they can play and and imagine things. And it was, I think, I don't know, Mazen found it. Uh, on, you on heard about it and then you looked for it uh, on YouTube that metronome at some point when you put them all together in a certain uh, uh, manner, they start to, they, they manage to become 
working together also each one ha is different but uh, they, they sing, and they, they sing, sing together yeah. they sing together and it was like a magic uh, thing for us and uh, when you put them on the can when we uh, yeah. put them on on the can so it was for us let's play let's uh, yeah uh, and all things are yeah, bizarre, magic, but at the same time scientific. Uh, yeah, this was a scientific a study, like how to sync <laughs> metronome. We found it and then mm. built on it. This, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, also like uh, we 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 wrote like uh, different scenes, uh, uh, and we had like some ideas for for scenes to 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 put them on stage. And uh, when we had this uh, scene, the metronome. Mm -hmm. Uh, there were already uh, the scene of uh, when I was young already written and prepared and we were thinking that this will be the first scene when when I'm young when I was, I was young, young. Yeah. which ends up being the last scene. yes yeah. which <laughs> ended actually the last scene and actually we when we had the metronome scene we thought no no it's this is the opening uh, yeah. scene that we are going so it changed everything this mm -hmm. uh, when we had it already mm -hmm. actually you were telling me that yeah, so you built the scenes kind of each as their own kind of worlds, as their own chapters. Or, right. And then you weren't thinking of the script in a kind of linear way. Yeah. But I was curious now, now having performed it, is it kind of set? Like, do you imagine the order of these, of these different parts staying the same, of it always ending with when I was young? Or, or is there something about the script that can always be interchangeable? Like no, since it's not it's not a story like a narrative story, so it's uh, it's in a way like there are like scenes, elements, uh, uh, ideas. Then you can play with them. Like you, it's like it becomes like you 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 edit them. It's a non-linear thing. So uh, we can do this the same piece with a different order. It's like and modules. Yeah, 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 you can really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, this also one one of the things that we we thought about that uh, uh, how to shuffle things and and maybe we will change later. We don't know <laughs> because <laughs> it could be it yeah. could be like uh, an other order. Yeah. Yeah, I learned with them something like uh, two days ago. I was asking Lena, like, you know, better in theater until when we can change everything? Because <laughs> <Yeah>. because <laughs> because ten days ago yeah. it was a different place. So it's really always in in kind of. Uh, it's nice that mm -hmm. it's a work in progress all the time. And yeah. like like Rabbi is saying, it's really modular, mm -hmm. and in a sense they are almost very independent. But then there is uh, um, uh, like uh, something that gets out from the topping of the, all this thing, mm -hmm. and if you shuffle them the big meaning will stay the same, but still you will have difference. Like, exactly. for instance, if we put when I was young in the beginning it's rather than the end, it changes, it changes. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. mm -hmm. And it's interesting that we can play with it. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. it's like a Lego game. Like yeah, you can really yeah. build them in different ways. Yeah. And um, so the piece also seems to be really in part about death, about your own personal death, about the aging of the body, but also about kind of the destruction in the world, the destruction you've encountered by living in Beirut through the civil war um, and beyond. And I was I was just curious how you would summarize the themes in the work, at, if you would kind of talk about it this way or not. But this is some of the things I got from it. Definitely there is something re uh, very much related to the fact that uh, we are from Lebanon, we lived in Beirut. Uh, Etc. But at the same time, I think that uh, it's a lot about any person anywhere on earth thinking about the world today and how it is going politically, economically, the climate, uh, mm. coming disaster and, and whatever. Yeah. I think it's a big disappointment about uh, everything uh, going on uh, today and that mm, a lot of people all over the world are uh, have this feeling and to think about life and i think every person also at some point at many points <laughs> in uh, each life ask himself and herself what can i do what did i do did i do enough uh, did i do the right thing uh, can i do anything more or differently is it too late for me is it too late for the whole world and and whatever so it is not about uh, the particular experience of being from beirut and having lived the, the wars uh, uh, in lebanon uh, of course it is nourished a little bit some some particular examples and details uh, 
uh, experiences, but all over it's, uh, it, it is, I think it is a history of the humanity. Mankind, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mine, no. no, it has this very epic kind of tone. And I think it also starts with, with Thuma, with then it feels that way, like it kind of starts with like the plague or something, right? Mm -hmm. In this kind of sense, that you keep saying, and, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then we were killed, then we were whatever, <laughs> devoured. Or, yes, there, was, there was actually, it's funny you say the plague, there was a, a kind of short passage on the plague that we, that we removed afterwards, but there is this thing. And like, mm -hmm. like Lina is saying, it's universal, of course, mm -hmm. life, death, and, and the absurdity of all this thing, mm -hmm. but it's timeless also. So it could be from people from Beirut who had lived the war, or from people from, from wherever, mm -hmm. and at, at any time in, mm -hmm. and, also, even though some people don't think about death or don't care about aging or don't care about all this thing and are not afraid, etc., but you always have a mother, a father, a kid, or wh whatever. Like death is present, of course, in all, in everywhere. It's in mm -hmm. inevitable, and um, maybe we are at a certain age where where we think it's not like like I think of the monologue of Rabia where he says, "I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid." Somehow, it's not being afraid of death as much as you are afraid of aging and um, and the fact of, of like as long as you know your brain could be mm -hmm. like you could keep it young somehow mm -hmm. at some point your body won't follow i mean it's mm -hmm. inevitable you yeah. cannot escape this so it's really kind of questioning and then indeed it starts like you would say okay these are three people who lived the war who lived the, and then little by little in the play at least i think you say Oh, but I do relate totally, like wherever you come from, yeah, yeah. I do relate totally to this kind of... Uh, mm -hmm. So so in a sense, you would think, yeah, maybe because, but the, and then at the end, you understand that everybody, uh, it, it's really like somehow the biggest and the most stupid uh, mm -hmm. matter. Like it's, it's really something, yeah. um, whoever, like you're happy, you're sad in life, you're poor, you're rich. Like I'm, I'm saying really cliches here. Mm -hmm. Everybody relate to this thing and in a way, we tried with our dark humor to attack it from this side. But mm -hmm. even though we were, uh, it, it went beyond our control. Like at some point we said, but it's not funny at all anymore, you know, mm -hmm. because we have a tendency to have a black humor and it, yeah, it yeah. is still in the play, of course. But then it went even out of our control. It really became mm. frightening almost for us, you know, like uh, to, to deal with, with the subject. But, mm -hmm. but we try to deal with it very seriously, but also keeping um, in a sense, we are still doing theater. Yeah. And we are talking about all this, but we are still alive to talk about it. So it's really many layers in, in the way of uh, hmm. presenting the thing and, and dealing with them. Mm -hmm. It feels also like maybe, maybe death isn't always the best word of talking about it, but maybe it's also about like the perpetual failure of living, mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. This, this is it, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually just like to, it's not uh, the fact that we lived wars in, yeah, in yeah, Lebanon. Yeah, absolutely. It's not, uh, because like, you know, during the war, at least like our generation, we lived the civil war, which was long. It's nothing to do with the war because war is war, mm -hmm. you know, like, but the fact that like fighting stops and we are all the time working for like to to make some life is better like in a way and another and like you see like every day it's like you say like oh yesterday it was better and then tomorrow comes and you say like oh yesterday is better and and it's like disappointed disappointments all the time and uh, and this about this actually that in Lebanon war stops like like or fighting but actually nothing so changed. Yeah. Actually, it's going worse and worse. And, and, and in the world also, yeah. not only Lebanon, not only the Middle East, everywhere in the world. It's crazy how it's going. Like, and this like... It goes it's worse and worse. And you feel we are getting progress and the humanity is getting to so much things like civilization and progress. And the more we get progress, the worse it becomes. Like, it's really insane that today yeah. We live at an age where everybody could eat at his, like everybody could be educated. We have the means, you know, yeah. we can yeah. send people to the moon. Yeah. Everything should be perfect and harmonious. And it's worse than, than the worst barbaric periods in, in, in history. So, mm -hmm. so it's about failure. Yeah, you say mm -hmm. it always, like it's a lot, a lot has to do about realizing this failure and about the lost innocence of childhood, etc. Mm -hmm. And like one day you wake up, you say, oh, it, it's not like they told me, you know. Mm -hmm. And from this point, every day, it's, you, you discover it's even worse than you thought, you know. Mm -hmm. 
And it looks like really very pessimistic, but, but I think at the same time, the fact that we are doing it and in this uh, uh, black way, but, but there is something that the fear, it means there is something hope. Like to, to be able to express this fear yes. means you are so here and you are like, yeah, of course. <laughs> like it's this paradox uh, matter. Mm -hmm. I was also interested in like how memory works in the piece, and you know because you're calling it this requiem for the living, and the requiem is about remembrance, right? Um, but the piece isn't nostalgic at all at the same time, and I was curious like how how memory works for you, the timeline of memory, and like. Um, there's also this this forgetting that exists within the piece, and that in itself is like a form of resilience. The I memory think. is not uh, when there is memory. It's not about uh, a para, para, paradis, para, lost, paradise. Lost paradise. Lost paradise. paradise yeah. uh, lost paradise. Paradis oh, perdu. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For example, in the scene of when I was young, we already see how much a kid <laughs> could be cruel. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when there is nothing the innocent and good and uh, angel in uh, so so and yeah and uh, and we, so we we end with uh, the scene and we start with uh, the summa sin then scene also which is oh from the beginning of the humanity it is about uh, power about repressing others and as violence you know, violence and like uh, walter benjamin says uh, the past is just a big uh, amount of ruin uh, of ruins uh, rubbles. Uh, of rubbles mm. and uh, yeah there is nothing to be nostalgic about it so the memory is uh, and in this meaning, past, present, future is almost uh, the same, and uh, the time is uh, blocked. Uh. Indeed, the, 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 what you say about about uh, childhood is, you always think about kids being very uh, innocent and everything, but kids are the most cruel persons <laughs> in the world. You you forgive them because they are kids, but actually, like the cruelty of man is 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 there since since wherever like you begin to 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 kill animals because you could kill them like yeah. an ant or whatever you you begin to express your power on anything you could yeah yeah and then it's about power mm. always like mm. uh, yeah. mm -hmm. even sometimes losing power is is having like somehow it's always expressing kind of power and mm -hmm. uh, so the mem the memory is what we are still doing yeah. then is what we inherited the past the histories that we have inherited from the beginning if there is any beginning <laughs> till today and this is what we are continuing to do to kill to invade to withdraw to uh, rape uh, to laugh and etc et and, and in a sense we do not put i think i hope so I, we do not put ourselves at all like and this is what is interesting, I think, in the play. We do not put ourselves at all as like giving lessons, like, yeah, this is bad, as if we, the three of us, have a better pedigree or whatever. Or as if we have solutions, like we have no, we are, we are as, uh, as uh, responsible somehow as everybody and we are as uh, uh, like powerless as everybody, like we mm -hmm. can't change anything. We can make a, a theater play about it, but this won't change. I mean, in, in, in the war between uh, art and violence, I, I would bet on violence. I, <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't bet on art, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's in a way, it's not uh, really about forgetting and remembering. It's not, it's mainly maybe about, uh, about loss, like, uh, and, and in a way like this fear of losing all the time, mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, the, the scene of the dead, of our dead, like this loss, like your names. And so it's not nostalgic, it's not like remembering, it's not forgetting. It's about this loss and, and like with the scenes that comes afterward with Lina's monologue, for example, like it's like uh, in a way like to push this to the extreme and like, okay, I want to lose everything everything like it becomes like a kind of a resistance that's maybe. like your monologue huh? too yeah yeah and also so the title of the piece 
Borborygmus. Everyone's been laughing about it this whole weekend because it's an English word that none of us knew before. <laughs> like it's like the rumbling of the stomach. Um, and I was wondering how you, how the digestive system, how this all like started to enter how, into how the How did piece. it make it into the piece? Yeah, this is the whole story. Yeah. I, I tend to, like sometimes when somebody say, what is the piece about? We have each one different answer. So one of them is Requiem for the Living that we like to use. I, I'd like to lose another one sometimes. I say it's about life and death and the digestive system. <laughs> yeah. And then everybody laughs at the end. Yeah. But in a sense, like we were also talking about this uh, physical presence, like besides the brain and besides the thinking, the physical presence and the physical, like, I could talk I'm, for myself, I'm a non-believer and many times they say, yeah, like the man is a proof of, of God's wisdom and like it's so perfect. Then I say, what is perfect? You know, you know this thing I do, I do not understand. If I was God, I would yeah, do it yeah. really easy. Like you eat and you shit with nothing inside or, or, you, or you don't even need to eat, you know, like if, if I wanted to make it perfect. Yeah, yeah. So all this thing and then, uh, and then at some point, I can't remember who of us, like, like we, we got the idea. I, like, let's work on the digestive system. I don't know how it came at some point. After and lunch. then... I remember <laughs> I was having my cigarettes yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah, at the yeah, balcony. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I have to remind you, like, there was a scene that we, we did not include in the, in the piece. It was like a dialogue or conversation between stomachs. Oh. So it's just like yeah, yeah. you just hear the, 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 the mics on, the on our, stomach. our stomachs and they oh. talk to each other, this <laughs> rumbling stomach. And this is, we actually, we cut it. Why did you cut I it? remember then when Lina was out and we, I don't know how we got this. And then Lina entered and said, Lina, we have fantastic ideas. She said, what? We're going to do a text about the digestive system. She said, what? Like, what? Are you crazy? And then we... <laughs> We were like crazy, but then we begin the three of us, each one on his computer, going to Wikipedia and, sit, <laughs> and seeing how, and to other things like, hey, I, there is Amilaz that, that I don't know what he does. And then we became experts of, of the whole digestive system and, and we wrote it. But indeed, like it's all, all uh, also it's the human condition, like, like it's so fragile and it's so uh, not perfect. So, uh, and, and then we got this monologue where like it took time. In the beginning, we were talking only about the digestive system. Then the idea of digesting oneself became. Yeah. Uh, and then for a while, like one of our titles, because in the beginning, we didn't have a title. So we had one title that we proposed, but before we knew anything. And it was uh, Rabia who proposed it. And we liked it a lot. It was uh, let's fight until six, then let's have a drink. Yeah. Which resembles Which a lot our, relation, our relationship <laughs> as friends. And so it was really nice. But yeah. then we, we felt it's very general and it doesn't look anymore like uh, it, it could work on any other play we, we could do. So, so we were looking for something and we mm. put many names. And one of them was the digestive. No, not the digestive. The sound of the, the how do you yeah, say, yeah, the so stomach, the gar rumbling, stomach rumbling, gargling, you say? Yeah. 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 Yeah, and we wrote it in Arabic, which is Karkarat uh, al-Baton or Kharkarat al-Baton. Oh, okay. And then uh, with all the time, like, it was a nice idea for the title, but we didn't like the word like the stomach gargling, like for, for a play. <laughs> yeah. Then I don't know how, yeah, I went to, to search and we find this Borborygmus word. And the great thing is it is the same in English, in French, in German and in Arabic. And the great thing is that it's a word coming from Greek. Mm. And oh, yeah, the yeah. etymology of it comes from the sound. It's not, it has no etymology. It's like a brr, brr, brr. It came really from, <laughs> from the sound of it. Right, right. And like we said, it's great. But then, then we hesitated or we put it then. Then Rabia and Lina tell me once, you know, like some friends said, how is it called? We couldn't, <laughs> we forgot how to <laughs> pronounce it. It took us a few days to be able to, to, be able to just pronounce the thing. Yeah, yeah. But Same then here. we, yeah, yeah. But then we liked it because indeed, <laughs> Indeed, like it creates like some some friend lately said, but what does it mean? I said, did you Google it? He said, no, I didn't think about it. And then he Googled it. He said, it's great. <laughs> it's, uh, right. So it's nice because first it's it sounds really weird and it has a nice onomatopoeic uh, 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 thing quality. But also it's like really nobody heard of this, of this word. Like it's really a word somehow scientific and, and all the scene of the digestive system is full of scientific words and things. Yeah. So we said, okay, we'll take the risk, let's do it. And then 
anyway. I mean, the mm -hmm. title, like, people, people are not coming only for the title. No, no, so, yeah. And in a way, it creates something like people, like some curious people would go and see what, yeah, yeah, curiosity, like, what, what does it mean? Is it an invented word? And then, oh, no, it exists. And, <laughs> and the great thing is, like, it's really rare to have a title that you could use really in, like, in Lebanon, we will use it, or in French, or, right. and it's, it's the same, yeah. Yeah, it is a revelation, I think, for people. <laughs> Good. Um, so Rabia had told me that one of the kind of rules that you had when you were making the piece was that you would never do anything that you've done before. Um, and I was curious, like, why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> like, um, and if that's even possible, like, is it ever possible to fully diskill yourself, you know? But I was curious, like, actually just like how that kind of manifested for each of you, like, and what 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 new things you had ended up doing in this? What new techniques or approaches? I think it is possible. It is possible. Uh, you don't uh, you don't burn uh, born pardon burn born again uh, like a new person. Of course not. You are still carrying a lot of things, uh, but I mean to not uh, allow yourself to be stuck. In uh, in uh, in uh, how we say in English recette de cuisine. Uh, yeah, yeah, in a, like in in a, a frame, recipe, like in a yeah, frame. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And and this is a challenge I think every artist. And uh, when you are working with somebody for the first time, and uh, when you, he is also not working with us for the first time, but he is working in theater for the first time. So this is a chance, occasion, to 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 really. Uh, goes uh, to, to places that you didn't uh, develop for for many for many years so it, it is important and it's not the first time uh, in, uh, in our lives that suddenly like this we we turn a, a big pages again it's not becoming version again and uh, starting from nothing but uh, and it wasn't from the beginning also, like it took yeah. us some time to take this decision and to talk about it. But I think the risk was b very high. I, I don't want to speak everywhere, but in Lebanon, at least all of us, like the three of us have really signature uh, um, work and things. So like, for instance, OK, I do not work in theater, but I'm a performer as a musician. And what I do on the trumpet is really quite unique good or bad I don't know but <laughs> but it's quite unique like I really torture the instrument in in, in funny ways <laughs> and I torture some some people are tortured also by the music but then it's it was really like uh, uh, to, like very risky to to arrive to somewhere where oh it's stopping what Rabia and what Lina and what Mazen does and put them together yeah, and yeah. so it was easy in a way to go this way and uh, many times I say yeah but here I could use the trumpet and do this that I don't so then Rabia said okay I tell you what or Lina I don't remember right. you don't use the trumpet and we don't do projection because, because they have a lot of projection usually <laughs> so each one was like really like his biggest kind of, of, of uh, <laughs> trick or, or, or signature right. signature move if you yeah, want like yeah. let's remove our signature moves and in a way it was like obliging us to 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 go search somewhere else and not to arrive to do something by uh, by Rabia plus Lina plus Mazen like topping our things but rather becoming a new person like the three of us doing something new like that could not be done by by Rabia or by Lina or by Mazen or and and not topping our savoir-faire our mm -hmm. our, our uh, and I think it was very enriching mm -hmm. too because it's a limitation that pushes you to create new uh, new boundaries so mm -hmm. so for instance I went out from my electronic music and my trumpet music but then we dis we like Lina said like from the beginning we want to do a concert mm -hmm. and I think we abandoned the idea but it's still almost a concert so yeah. there is a lot of work on the sound and on but it's always done in things that we, at least I never played them in a concert. Rabia also plays guitar, but, but not like this in a concert. <laughs> the accordion, it was since the beginning, like, like we want to bring an accordion and not playing it because we like the instrument and we like this breathing, yeah. the quality breathing. that it has. Yeah. So, so it was really kind of deconstructing things and playing with toys, like we stole some toys from my kids and then used them. And then yeah. we, we really were, like it was really very playful the way we do it, but very playful with a conscious, like we're not doing them only because it's fun or because it's cool or because it's nice on stage. So everything had to be 
if I may say, digested by, by, by the play and even on stage. So when we break the glasses, then they are used to work on them. And when we throw the papers, then we take them, we throw them again, then we put them, then we use yeah. them for... So it's really kind of organic way of organizing all, all this, uh, this sound. So it's play with a lot of work on the sound, but somehow with a total deconstruction of the instruments and of the... Mm -hmm. And the same for, for Lina and Rabia, who, who went really, uh, I think, in this play. I mean, I didn't see the play from outside, but even from here, it's the time that I see them the most moving on stage in my life. <laughs> even though we don't move a lot, but I mean, them are like, still. Yeah, yeah. like they're, they're, they're still theater is kind of a signature that is very powerful. Right. And here we, we accepted to also move a little bit from, like, to really go in territories that, that we, would, we wouldn't think. Even when we started, mm -hmm. we wouldn't think we would go there. But then this mm -hmm. thing came after a week of writing, like, okay, mm -hmm. let's make a tabula rasa and try to go from there somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it was amazing how the, the sound was generated by the set and how you all were like in control of the sound and making the sound. And I mean, you were amplifying it and you would bring over the mics to this kind of object that was creating its own noise and um, and yeah but it was a unique thing to experience but I was curious also how Thomas and how he as a collaborator your kind of your technical director how his how he was also working and collaborating with you with the sound and, and this kind of making did a great job but <laughs> <laughs> I think they could explain it better no, no, than it's me. actually Thomas uh, couple he's like uh, he's a friend uh, before this uh, Work. We worked with him, me and Lina, in a piece called uh, 33 RPM, uh, which was also demanding technically. Uh, and but he is uh, also a theater. Uh, he is also a an artist. An artist. An artist. Uh, yeah. Performer. Yeah. So he come from this theatrical background. So performance. Uh, yeah. Theater, yeah. Right. You know his background better than me. Yes. Actually. <laughs> he was her student. He was actually. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, but actually we, we had like ideas how what we want, etc. So he he collaborated with us uh, and we were like throwing problems on him. We like, were throwing yes, problems like, on him. Yeah, yeah, OK, yeah. Well, what do you think, how we can do this or like how we develop this idea, etc. So like uh, he, so his he input was, was like, really, really big and amazing, also like, um, the fact of him being a performer and and of Rabia and Lina knowing him and then me, I know him very well now after, but like since since he was brought in, because sometimes you could have a technical director who is really only technical. And uh, and Thomas had an input even like he was, since we are the three of us directing and performing, it's really difficult to see what's that. like. Sometimes Lina would say to Rabia, take the accordion or to me, I want to see it from outside. And each one of us has to go outside and see the two others. And yeah. So Thomas had a great force eye for us and force ears. Mm -hmm. And he was really, uh, his input was really important. And on the technical level, his, uh, like it's, if, if it wasn't him, we would need three people, I guess, like one for the light, one for the... <laughs> yeah, he did everything, yeah. almost yeah. all yeah. the technique. One for bearing us. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was really great. Uh, I, I, I couldn't think of somebody else yeah, yeah. doing this and yeah, yeah. very helpful and, and found many small solutions for things we, we, we thought wouldn't yeah. work. Mm -hmm. So we really we would throw a problem on him. Like, <laughs> hey, Thomas, listen to this. Yes, to Thomas. <laughs> and never he would have said, I, I never heard him saying no, it's unfeasible. I, he said, let, let, let me look into it and we'll see how, how we'll manage. Or he would, if he say it's unfeasible, he would bring another solution or try to build. Uh, mm -hmm. So he was really a collaborator uh, more than a normal, only technical director. Yeah. And you, you all have been here now for two weeks and building a lot of this on site, right? And I, I guess in terms of like the lighting, that aspect of it, right? That was. Was that just done in the Maguire Theater here? We don't know what how to do it in another <laughs> theater. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was curious. Yeah, I was curious, like how the piece will shift. You anticipate it shifting as you now begin to tour it um, after Minneapolis. Uh, yes, it has been very much shaped by the space itself and its technique and its infrastructure, and uh, we. This is a big question now, how, how to make it in other places. I think that there is some big lines that we can keep and uh, 
try to create other places, but at the same time, we cannot copy. I think in that every time, but how to not make concessions then, how to re recreate, it, yeah, yeah. It, not uh, adapt it, recreate it, you have to recreate uh, it. Yeah. But this also in each, each place, but this also depends on how much you have time in each place. So we'll have a, pl a plan B, which is kind of a minimum that should be, and then okay, uh, or every time we could have a period of for working, we should really create it uh, with the space itself. And this is new for us and but very challenging and very exciting. Uh, mm -hmm. to and also the play, in a way, is, is uh, very simple. So it's, it's, it doesn't require, it's not like a big production with... So it's very simple and it could be, rec like, wherever you put it, you will have surprises and you will have to recreate it with some other things. But, but everything, like everything is based mostly on, on the text and on the small things that we use. So it will change all the atmosphere, like finding the same atmosphere would be difficult, so you will really have to recreate this, but, yeah. but in the end it's, yeah, it's showable somehow in, in, in very different places. You don't need, like some, some plays could not be made on a stage smaller than this, or you know what I mean. And, right. and this is really a small production, I would say, it's not like a... No, it's not like a Castellucci production, yeah, for yeah, example. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I guess we'll have to look forward to that. <laughs> no, but actually without also, like we were lucky also to, to work at the Walker Art Center with like an amazing crew. Absolutely. Yeah. Technical crew were really like, because like the space uh, and the stage like uh, inspired us to change and to do things. And we were asking like, can we do this? And we were expecting maybe like say like oh well, no they were like more enthusiasm yeah, yeah, than yeah, us yeah. like yeah let's do it let's we can do like wh whatever like we had like ideas like they were like okay let's go for it like like joe karen doug and, and john, john yeah, yeah the four they, they of them were really fantastic. like yeah, yeah. amazing like uh, and Great sometimes job. making like because we worked with many other <laughs> teams in yeah, our yes, life, and right. sometimes saying for the fifth time to change one thing, you know, like usually the engineers are like, like didn't you know what you want before yeah, coming? Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. it's the fifth time you make me change this light and go there. Never at no point never, never, like you never. felt like I'll do it. It was always sure. Let's try mm -hmm. it and and this enthusiasm and this readiness, of course, yeah, push yeah. pushes you to uh, you. You know, also you could you could send on them things, they will, they will take it and, and answer back. And mm. um, it's, it's nice to work. Mm -hmm. I, for me, I, again, like I'm used to work only with sound engineers, so working with the whole team. So I asked them, is it like this everywhere? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> they were really clear, no, no, don't expect this everywhere. Okay. So yeah, I cross fingers for, 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 the, for the rest. <laughs> okay, great. Um, well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. You have another performance this evening, so. Um. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks. much, Ali. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs>